Hello! Welcome to Attack of the Awesome, where we make geeky and nerdy look awesome. I'm your host, Scooter Mike, and along with me is my awesome co-host, Gomer the Gamer. Yo! All the homies in the house say, what's up? <laughs> and uh, our other co-host, Rosenhacker, can't be with us because, you know, family issues and stuff. So we're wishing good things to his family right now, and uh, we're just yes going with the flow, and the show must go on without him. And uh, to continue the Team Nostalgia Chick Trilogy episode, uh, we have the excellent second right-hand woman to Lindsay, uh, Nella, on the podcast today. Hello, Internet. Yay! Hey! Hooray! Hey. Hooray! And yet, and you realize that this is a string of shows to where, well, if Rosen Hacker was here, he'd be able to say the same thing. Of people, we got backfest, and you didn't. I know. Uh, and I have video evidence. <laughs> I I see the video evidence. I was je- I'm so jealous. Damn it's you okay. two! Yes. But it's that's okay. okay. I still talk to him online. It'll all it'll all be okay. Yes. 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 Um, let's first hop into uh, what's happening today. Uh, it, today's July 15th, 2012. Uh, let's check out what's happening today in geek history. Uh, let's start off in 1955. The final episode of Flash Gordon, the TV series starring Steve Holland, airs on Dumont Television Network on this day. Wow. And then, and then eventually... Yeah. yeah. Hey, let's say happy birthday. Person, to... but... Yeah, today's birthday goes to uh, Adam Savage from Mythbusters. He was born today in 1967. Really? Really? Yeah. Rock on. Yeah. So Adam Savage. Yeah, Adam Savage. And uh, he was at Comic Con and he had the mask of the Rocketeer. Nice. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. Just a disguise from the crowd. Uh, moving on. Uh, 1972, Pioneer 10 becomes the first man-made object to travel through the asteroid belt. Ooh, cool. Space. 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 Uh, 1983, Space. A Nintendo, ships, <laughs> Nintendo ships the family computer video game system in Japan. In two years, yes. they will market this as the NES in North America. Uh-huh. And save the North American video game market. Yeah! <laughs> uh, in 1985, using one coin, James Vellant plays Joust for over 67 hours, a world record for any arcade video game. 67 hours? Yes, on Joust. <laughs> Jeebus, I can't even keep up Tetris for 30 minutes. And I'm damn good at Tetris. Joust for 60... Oh, shit. Did the guy eat? I don't know. <laughs> May have to put more research into that if you want to know. Uh, yeah. Wow. I mean, uh, I know... I, I've heard about, like, dance marathons where they allow you, like... Uh, bathroom breaks and things, but, uh, you know, so you see, like, of... what he... Yeah. Uh, I, I just hope it isn't, like, some of these people, like, in Vegas, they are so intent on those slot machines, they don't even bother to get up if they have to go to the bathroom, and very unfortunate things happen. Yeah, but imagine, this, this, yeah. this was an 85, so... You know, he could have yeah. had, had, like, a pea cup with them, or he had food in stock with them. Or, I hope so. You know, so. just a or at least somebody adult oh. pampers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, that yeah. works. It works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Diaper rashes for a week, you know, uh, <laughs> internet notoriety <laughs> for a lifetime. Yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Even before the internet, you're going to get internet notoriety. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All because right. here we are on the internet talking about this guy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, his his it's there we go. Yeah. It, it's legit. <laughs> yep. 
2003, the Mozilla Foundation, also known as Firefox, is officially found, formed today, in 2003. Uh, oh, Firefox. Yeah. <laughs> I tried that for a while. Oh, so it's the day that Internet Explorer became the browser you use to download other browsers. So that was the day. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nice. Yeah, was. Uh, same year, 2003, LucasArts released Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic for Xbox in the U.S. Ooh. Today, in 2003. Cool. Uh, 2004, on this day, Microsoft announces Xbox Live has 1 million subscribers. Nice. Uh, 2006, on this day, Twitter launched to the public. Wow. 2006? 2006, on this wow. day. Wow. That was wow. forever. That was six years ago. God damn. Yeah, yeah. six years uh, ago. Huh. Twitter. Twitter, you're six years old. Oh. Happy fucking birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, birthday Twitter. Twitter. I, I eat way more than I should. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Thank you think we for all. compressing my life into 140 characters or less. <laughs> you have made me concise. <laughs> Yes, oh, man. and some of us need it. If you hear some of my shows, oh, God, do I ramble. Oh. <laughs> right. He does. Except for my, like, I ramble, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I need the, no, I'm sorry, you're over your word limit. Okay, fine. Let me, yeah. maybe if I compress with into a W and a slash, and I erase and with the and symbol, and I just get rid of some verbs and personal pronouns. There, good. I can tweet. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Uh, two more. Uh, 2008 on this day, Act One of Josh Whedon's Doctor Horrible Sing Along Blog featured Neil Patrick Harris is released online today. Rock. Yeah. Yes. I knew that was coming. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh man, awesomeness. Uh, lastly, in 2009 today, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince was opens, released today. Cool. Potter. Uh, yeah. Every hey. time I hear Harry Potter nowadays, I don't think of, well, you know, uh, what's her name? Uh, Emma, Emma Watson, Hudson. right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think of her growing up to be all this hot, hot chick and everything, although she is. She is. Uh, I don't think of you know all the movies or anything. I remember one thing: drive-by spoilers for uh, Half Blood Prince. Oh yeah. Hey, Snape killed Dumbledore. Oh yeah. yeah. So that YouTube video. <laughs> you bitch. Yeah. Yes. I I'm like, I'm like, it's like I'm not even. I I admit I am not into Harry Potter, but I'm looking at these guys. It's like, okay, on the one hand, some of the reactions are funny, but at the same time, you guys are dicks. <laughs> No, yeah, no, it's it's like real life, um, the internet trolling coming on in real life. Yeah, that, that's what it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, if the, only they had said Mr. Trollolo by that, been playing him. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is what happened today in geek history. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's hop into the next segment of Around the Web, where we talk about the awesomeness that is the internet and what we, what we have seen. Gilmer, do you have anything? Well, I am actually going to use this to kind of pimp myself out a little bit, because <laughs> uh, I actually just uploaded a video at the time of this recording. I did my first ever uh, Let's Try video, and the story behind it is I... My girlfriend lives up near uh, Cleveland, and last time I went to go see her, she got me one of those Mega Man E-Tank energy drinks, because she knows I am a huge Mega Man fan. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I actually tried that on camera today and filmed it, and it's up on my site as this recording. And if you guys need the site, it is rtgomer.wordpress.com, and it shall eventually also be up on NerdViacom as well. Yes, yes. Check Very it out. Good. Check it out. And, uh, alright, so, obviously this weekend is all about Comic-Con, and I I have to say something about what I've seen around the web. There's, I will mention more about this later in the podcast, but the Doctor Who 
stars, Matt Smith, Arthur Duvall, and uh, Karen Gill Gillen, they're at Comic-Con this year, and they're doing their all crazy shenanigans. They have a, they have, they have a Q&A panel, and there's this one moment where Kill Karen Gillen does a dialect impression. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> it is hilarious, and, it, and it's spot on. And For, like, oh. what dialect was she doing? The dialect? Well, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's Amy Dalek now. Probably. Uh, oh, the I, oh, I heard just dialect, it. not Dalek. So she was doing a no. Dalek impression, da not a dialect. Sorry. I, was about to say, like, I did that last <laughs> time. <laughs> Well, that's, yeah. I have pronunciation problems, so if I have this weird, weird saying things, that's my problem. No, no, it, it's well, you're no. from Wisconsin. That's to be expected. I'm, I'm from, from Wisconsin, <laughs> so I say something different. Yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah. Trust me, I I, I listened to uh, another set podcast that's run by another guy from Wisconsin. He has similar issues, so. Yeah, but uh, the. Karen was like, okay, give me any phrase, just anything, and I'll do it in that, in that impression. And they're thinking of something, and there's people in the crowd saying, exterminate. And they're like, no, 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 no. Matt comes up with, do you like green apples, and can I buy you a soda? I was like, really? <laughs> really? Is that the phrase you want her to say it in? Oh, dear. And, oh, my God. It is freaking spot on and I can't stop talking about her because I have a huge crush on her obviously who doesn't have a huge crush on her and no, uh, even the straight women want her <laughs> yeah ginger we agree with the doctor who who doesn't love a ginger yeah. I mean really come yeah. on mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, be, let's be real yeah yeah who doesn't yeah. love a ginger <laughs> indeed uh, since this is a video podcast, you people watching on internet will see it right now. Um, what can I say? Give me a sentence. You're such a mimic. And I'm going to say it as a Dalek. Oh, God. Right. Right, any I, sentence? Um, uh, doctor, I'm, you yeah, have yeah. been... <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> or, no, um... Exterminate. No, no, um... Do no, 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 let's think of something... Anything, anything in the world. Doctor, do you like green apples, and can I buy you a soda? <laughs> nice one. Make oh my long. god, I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. Okay, so I've come in, and I've gone, ha! What are you going You guys. Doctor, do you like green apples, and can I buy you a soda? <laughs> Before we move on to the next segment, I would like to ask the guest, Nella, if she has seen something around the web. If not, that's okay. Well, the right, off the, right off the top of my head, the thing that I've been uh, seeing crop up, because it's Comic Con and everyone's all dressing up for it, is um, it seems like a really popular thing nowadays is to recreate um, costumes in different styles. Like, And one of, my, one of the ones... I really want to do myself, like, or because people have drawn them online, is the Avengers as like, like red carpet designer gowns, and people have like this this woman um, drew these um, on DeviantArt. They're absolutely amazing to look at. They look really great. You want to wear them. They're just fabulous, <laughs> and people have been making them and wearing them to Comic Con. And it's really lovely. Um, and just seeing all these pictures pop up from Comic Con of, uh, of people, you know, breaking them out and wearing them, and like, oh, it's so good. Hulk is my favorite. Just, I'm, I'm a little torn between Hulk and Captain and just saying. Those are my two favorites. Um, and then this thing did her own version. Like, did her version of the gown based on the drawing. I just love when people do that. It makes my D cart so happy because it's classy. And you look at it and you're like, yes, Captain America rocks. <laughs> also, yeah. the shield is a clutch. That warms the cockles of my heart. A 
such a purse as Captain America's shield. Yes. Nice. Brilliant. Wow. Wow. Just... Yeah. No, it's fun. Holy crap. Fun. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, yeah. And that was Around the Web. Anyways, so let's hop into the next segment where I talk about what's happening in weird news. The weirdest of weird news. <sighs> uh, and it's food related this time, once again, because we love uh -huh. our food. And, uh, Burger King. Burger King, Burger King. Burger King? Burger King. What does Burger King do now? I don't know, it's what some guy did. Uh, the title of the article says, A Lactose Intolerant Nightmare. Whopper with 1,000 slices of cheese. What? Why? Oh, I heard about that. He, he's going to be in the bathroom for a while. Yeah. And I, I just pray to Manris that it, when, it, when things start finally moving, he doesn't sneeze. Yeah. Well, Trust me on this. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, this Japanese fellow took a Whopper and he just slapped on a thousand slices of cheese on it. And ate it. Wow. That's a thick burger, though. Yeah. Well... He has done this like this before because his previous attempt was he bought a Whopper and put 1,050 slices of bacon on top of it. Good Lord! So I love bacon, but holy shit! So he devoured that, too. So, I mean... Huh. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't uh, know. I don't know uh, what's well, with this guy. Is, uh, well, you know what right now, far? if this... If this was like a video thing, I would have that gift from Futurama of I don't want to live in this world anymore. Right there. That's <laughs> ah. right. right there. <laughs> oh, that's, man. that's my feeling on the matter. I will. I'll probably, Just saying. Oh, I'll probably add that in. <laughs> um, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, yeah. Fair. At least if this guy does, he's dying happy. Gotta give him that credit. He's exactly, yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. I'm trying to, trying to see. Oh, because, oh, all right, back it up here. He ate the whole burger with the 1,050 slices of, of bacon, but this one, he didn't eat the whole burger. Oh. He, uh, after uh, shoving seven or eight fistfuls of processed cheese in his face, he did manage to get 350 slices down before tossing his paper crown. Oof. Jesus, man. So, uh, wah, wah. Uh, yeah. He need, he'll, he'll need a special toilet because he's going to be on that for a long time. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Burger King, this is quite a while ago, so I don't know if Burger King's still doing this now. But Burger, Burger King says, Bacon That Sunday. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, they still are. Bacon Nalia from, from Denny's. Ex yeah, exactly. And Burger yeah. King has their own Bacon Sunday now. Hopefully, because this article I have is dated a few months back, so... Oh, no, they were advertising it, like, on our drive to North Carolina when we stopped at, a, at a Burger King, and it was advertised. Ah. It was there. Cool. It exists. All right, yeah. I'm just making sure if they didn't... Just making sure it wasn't a limited time only thing. Yeah. I know. It might be, next but it's still definitely available. Next time I visit my girlfriend, I'm going to have her uh, film me trying one of those. And uh, it, this only costs $2.49? $2.49? That's eh, not so bad. It's not so bad. Yeah. yeah uh, it's not so bad until like you get one piece of really fatty bacon in your sundae, <laughs> and you're chewing on it, and it makes the whole thing not worth it. <laughs> Believe me, I was there. I, I believe it. Yeah. I saw the video. I saw it too. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I'm just and, you, and here's the funny thing. I saw the video. This is about the time where I started actually trucking and getting everything going. And flying J trucks up to have Denny's 
pretty much all of them. I was like, okay, I can get to Udinese on a regular, whatever. Finally get to a point where I can actually try and order one. They weren't doing them anymore. <laughs> I'm like, damn it! <laughs> Aww. But Burger yeah. King, but I'll be able to try them thanks to Burger King. Yes. Uh, they do have the description of it. Soft syrup ice cream, caramel, chocolate, bacon bits, and a strip of bacon for garnish. <laughs> bacon is garnish. Yeah. It's not for garnishing. Bacon is for eating. <laughs> you can just eat it, you know. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Bird King's over with, and uh, let's talk about burritos. Oh. Yeah. This is going to get very weird for you people. Um, All right. There's a, there's a machine. It's called the 3D... Burrito Bot prototype where it will squirt on your desired ingredients onto a tortilla. Hola, my name is Marco. I'm a maker and interactive designer, and the only thing I enjoy more than making cool stuff is making a good burrito. Recently, I've been exploring ways to print food with digital fabrication techniques, specifically the 3D printing of food. It's called BurritoBot. 3D printing is a process of creating physical objects from a digital model, printing layer by layer of material until you have a finished object. Think of it like the replicator scene in Star Trek, where you tell the computer what you want and it instantly, or almost instantly, appears. 3D printing, and burritos for that matter, both rely on an additive manufacturing process achieved by laying down successive layers of material to construct 3D objects customized to an individual's needs. And sometimes you really need a burrito. BurritoBot takes a new twist on existing open source digital fabrication. It's a way to promote and explore the use of fabrication technologies for culinary, educational, and artistic purposes. Why? The burrito lends itself perfectly as a hybrid of both cuisine and technology. It allows us to talk about our food systems, and the emerging potential of 3D printing. Like you, perhaps, I am passionate about cooking and eating, but I'm concerned about the state of food that I eat. So I built BurritoBot as a way to investigate the issues revolving around food today. And plus, I just like playing with my food. There's no reason we can't have our burritos downloaded, printed, and into our bellies. This is totally feasible with your help. We have the technology. BurritoBot and I need your help to jump from prototype to reality. Making digital burritos doesn't come cheap and there's lots of moving parts. We would like to raise a bare minimum to continue refining and improving the 3D printer system. Mechanical parts and food ingredients alike, everything from the sterile containers and pneumatics for food extrusion to mobile and tablet interface design. Everything we would need to properly introduce BurritoBot to feed each of you. If you're in the New York City area, of course. If we reach our goal, we'll send you some cool stuff and immortalize your name on our laser cut tortilla of gratitude. From bits to bites. Gracias. Okay. And... The creator describes it as it'll print your dream burrito ingredients straight into your tortilla. So it's like a burrito printer. Huh. It's I'm trying to describe how it looks because you put the tortilla on this like place mat and there's just two valves and mind you that the ingredients will be in paste form. Right. So it squirts out the ingredients that you want onto the tortilla in paste form. Right. So... Print a burrito. I don't think we'll ever get one of these in this apartment. Yeah, it's, mm. it started out as a master's thesis research project of interactive design... by... of inter, interact, interactive designer Marco Martinez while studying at NYU Interactive Communications program. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. 
I swear to God, if, if you want to see what it looks like, and there's a video attached to this, I'll give you the link right now. Because... Because ah. mm. it's like, really? Yo, I want a burrito. Oh. But it's paste form. We're in the future, man. Everything's in paste form. Well, I mean, I was talking on uh, Star Trek the original series, and everything is colored cubes of food out of the replicator. Where, yeah, hmm. I mean, they were, they were definitely like bright, bright blue, green, pink, yellow cubes and marshmallows. It looked like I mean, colored. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. The future is now, obviously. I mean, yes. Yes, the future is now. We're getting now. there. We are getting there. Future has arrived. Do it. Um, yeah, and lastly, lastly, and, you know, it's summer, and, you know, the carnival scene's coming around. You got the deep-fried foods going around, you know, deep-fried Oreos. You got your deep-fried anything, you know. There's a lot of it out there. You got fried breaded bread, also from the Hush Puppies. Yep, <laughs> e everything, everything you could think of, actually, because, get this, deep-fried cereal is on its way to a county fair near you. Oh, huh. Lord. Deep-fried cereal. Do we have to deep-fried? Why, why, why? Uh, I'm all for deep-frying certain things, but I don't think cereal no, should be fried. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not for deep-frying shit. I think we need to get over this thing where we... We fry everything, and we need to get over this thing with bacon. We just, we as a country, as a people, we need to get over it. It's great. They're wonderful things. That doesn't mean it needs to be everything. Exactly. Exactly. Bacon doesn't need to be in everything. Yes. Everything oh. doesn't need to be deep fried. I'm I, just saying. I understand, yeah. and I totally Have agree. It, uh, but don't overdo it. <laughs> I mean, okay. I, I can agree with that. There's yeah. a time and a place. Not all the time, not every place. Come on, guys. I mean, this is, the, all... this is the same and, guy and even... who uh, made the deep fried Kool-Aid balls. Kool-Aid which... balls? Yeah, I think I mentioned that in an early episode, but this was before your time. Uh... But, yeah, deep fried Kool-Aid balls. Yeah, he basically uh, froze the Kool-Aid, put the batter on, you know, dropped it in the fryer. Yeah. Okay. But, Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah, we're going I mean, crazy with the deep, deep frying. Fry, yeah, hush puppies. Okay, fried chicken. Okay, deep fried turkey. Which my my dad has done. He's fried like whole turkeys for like big family get-togethers, which is pretty good, by the way. But you're you, you people. You, yeah, like we said a few minutes ago. We, we moderate. God damn it! And this includes the people in the South U.S. <laughs> Lastly, but, uh, I, you know, but I'll agree though. A deep fried Mars bar, I had one. It was delicious. Yes, it was a thing of beauty. I will admit it. It was. Yeah. That being said, bring it back <laughs> now. <all>. Uh, <laughs> just just so you know, uh, deep fried cereal comes in like two varieties. It comes with uh, cinnamon toast crunch and Trix flavors. Tricks. <laughs> Silly rabbit tricks are, are for kids. Not to be deep fried. No. That's like well, I mean, they're so sugary and, like, sweet. I guess that makes sense. Like, that, you know, if you're going to deep fry anything, you want something that... I, I don't really want to think, but like, why did we start talking about deep fried stuff? Oh, uh, <laughs> my brain does not want... Does not want... <laughs> and that is the food-related weird news. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I do have bit of weird news that I actually found on my show that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh -huh. There was a guy who, uh, who he, another one of these guys who got high on basketball in South Carolina. And um, I don't think it was anywhere near Nash, though. And it, it's, it's um, uh, noteworthy because he kept going around saying, eat you, eat you. And I just have to wonder, is he related to the guy in Miami? I don't know. Uh, so um, that, I mean, was it, they got on high on bath salts and were just like, lol, bath salts, I'm a zombie now. I and mean, just and 
I don't know, but apparently, because there's, there was another story where in Miami this guy was high on bath salts and started being zombified kind of thing, but, you know, apparently it wasn't bath salts, it was marijuana. Yeah, uh, of course, and, and uh, okay, okay, shutting up, shutting up, shutting up, let's go, get, uh, go too much of a rant over there, Save, I, I, do have, I do have a rant, but it's not supposed to be on this topic. <laughs> yes, you do, uh, and yes. Uh, we go into the next segment of Attack of the News, where we talk about, or actually I talk about news relating in news of movies and television, while Gomer has a rant of his own yeah. in the video game industry, or video yeah. games. Yeah. Video gamers. Yeah, and this actually now this now what I do have is uh, it does relate to uh, Metroid Other M. And before I go into this, I will say I have not played the game itself, but I have heard enough about it to know kind of where things are coming from, things are going. So like like I said, I have not what held the control and played the game. I have enough. I think I can speak with. Some sort, some level of knowledge, and and it first came out, and I realized how it came out. I think it was a year or two ago, however long ago it was, and people would bitch about Thomas, and they were like how she's characterized. I think one of the ones I heard was how she basically frozen terror when you get to a point where you fight Ridley, and I would say spoiler alert, but it's a fucking Metroid game. You fight Ridley in almost every goddamn game. Not really a spoiler. So, <laughs> so, and people are like, boy, what the fuck? She's like supposed to be this badass. You know, jump in, balls blazing and everything, if you will. And it's like, and I sit think about it, and I sit there and analyze it. And it's like, okay. In the timeline, Other End takes place after Super Metroid. Super Metroid is, and this one I am going to preface with a spoiler alert. And at the end of the game, as you're fighting Mother Brains, the little baby Metroid that was stolen at the beginning of the game, you know, tries to take out Mother Brains, saves your life, but gets killed in the process. And apparently between Metroid 2 and Super Metroid, Thomas and this baby Metroid had some sort of a bond. Needless to say, um, Thomas went all ragey, killed Mother Brain, blew, ended up blowing up the planet and all that. So I'm pretty sure by the time Other M comes, comes around, she's still recovering from it. Because that's pretty fucking traumatic. Add to the fact that Ridley was the one who killed her fucking parents when she was a kid. Nearly killed her. You know, and knowing that A, she beat, you know, she destroyed him again, or so she thought, to him come back just as strong as ever, that's going to do something to you. I think, I think they used to call him something like a shell shock. Which now that they call a post-traumatic stress disorder, which, okay, hey, you know what? Perfectly valid. That was, that was like the biggest thing about me, because, because in a way, yeah, I, I can see their arguments like, oh, she's not so much of a badass, but on the other hand, I find it refreshing, because it means she's fucking human. And I think, I don't know how much of it is still going on around now, but at the time, it was like, you guys, you realize this is just makes her more human she's not perfect you know yeah she's a badass but take a little bit of the perfection out of her more human. maybe a little bit more relatable who knows uh, but that was that was my big thing and I for some reason I ended up thinking about that a lot this week while I was on the road so um, and so that did for me and <laughs> okay. I'm speechless yeah <laughs> well that's what happened yeah I don't uh, know what to say about that but that was a good rant, by the way. Well, thank you. Uh, le let's get to the meat and potatoes of the news, uh, which was pretty much, you know, Comic-Con. I mean, Comic-Con's actually, st it's probably still going on right now. I mean, the late night stuff. But uh, the few things that I noticed from Comic-Con is, you know, the Firefly panel, the 10th, 10th anniversary reunion panel, which is going to be a long special on Science Channel, which features that panel and the behind-the-scenes footage and interviews of the whole Firefly experience and so forth coming out in the fall, maybe. So, if you're a Firefly fan, go check out Science Channel's uh, Firefly uh, special. Nice. Uh, uh, I did hear, however, in that panel, 
uh, Science Channel was like, oh, let's reboot Firefly on our channel. And Joss was like, yes! And I don't know if he was joking or not. So, I don't think he's Why ready. Not? I don't think he's ready to come back to TVA. He's just started out as a movie director, you know, with the Avengers and all. So, so who knows? Firefly might come back on Science Channel. Um, there was also Doctor Who, like I mentioned before. Doctor Who was a big thing at uh, Comic Con. Uh, but, but, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was another one, which uh, the Nickelodeon series, which is coming out in the fall, had a big panel, and they yeah, released. I'm just not hearing about that one. Holy crap! I mean, they released the theme song for the series. And it is killer. I mean, it's got the aspects of the original 80s show, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtle Power thing, and it, but it's a rap. You so, turn it into a rap. It's a rap. And, you know, people you, are like... You said that, and it didn't sell me, because it only makes me think of the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie with Vanilla Ice. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Sell it> better. <laughs> I am I am trying to sell it better because I'm really bad at this, but I mean, all right, the style of it, it's not a 2D animation kind of thing, it's a 3D animation. All right, all right. They're going different, and and they brought somebody back from the original series Ooh. to voice a character, uh, let me see, Rob Paulson, who was the original uh, Raphael voice, he's going to return to the series as the new Michelangelo. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, also, along to voice act would be Jason Big, Sean Esten, Greg Sipes, Wait, and... Jason Biggs? Yeah, Jason Biggs is going to voice the turtle. As in, pie humping American yep, pie yep. kid Jason Biggs. Yep, that Jason Biggs. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm going to have to check it out. I mean, yeah, uh, the, the uh, producer of the show did say there's going to be some changes to the show. I mean, something that's different. Uh, the biggest change would be to Splinter, the Turtles' rodent master. He would be now the same size as our four heroes and would be extremely agile. The new series would take the new Splinter and put him in the more crime-fighting situation with the Turtles. I don't have feel about the height change. Hasn't he always been at least semi-agile? I don't know. I mean, we never we never did get to see how Splinter was a great warrior, so you know, this might be the proof. Um, April O'Neil, instead of being in her, in her early 20s, she's going to be 16 years old. 16? The producers feel this would give more a sibling relationship with the Turtles. Yeah, I don't know about that. Remember, these are teenagers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's a teenager. So a teen... Yeah. Hello, hormones! Uh, they also uh, modified Donatello's weapon by adding a blade at the end of his bow staff. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I feel about this. I'll need to see it. I'll, I, I would watch it before I would be like, no, blasphemy. Uh, I'm a little hesitant. Still, the, no. to, be fair, to be fair, I, I would, 
Yeah, I also would watch it before Final Judgment. Just some of exactly. Huh? Yeah, the <laughs> like okay. Yeah, the producers also have modified the villains of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle world. We will be seeing the series go back to Dimension X with Krang and his rock soldier General Trag. Sweet. And he and he this General Trag will be 17, 17 feet tall and spew out lava. Uh, 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 uh Leatherhead, the alligator, will be a dark and gritty edge to him. Uh, is he still gonna be from Louisiana? Probably. And, oh boy. and the Rat King is going to come back. He will, He's described as a Shakespearean anti-hero. Rat, wait, wait. Rat King Shakespearean. I, Why is that not gelling in my mind? <laughs> I don't know. I'm wrong. I, I like the Shakespearean angle. Just, just, it, it's, it's not gelling in my mind very well. I think, again, it's going to be one of those things I'm going to have to see. <laughs> They were created by accident. They were kept a secret. They were trained for battle. Booyakasha! And now, when their city is under siege, the fate of humanity is in the hands of these four... Turtles. <laughs> When evil threatens our universe, these four brothers are destined to save the world. Okay, who's next? <laughs> Meet Leonardo, the leader. Thinks to be them. Donatello, the brains. Give it all you got. Raphael, the muscle. <laughs> and Michelangelo, the wild one. I can see a pizza place from up here. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles shelling out justice on Nickelodeon this fall. Boyakasha! Sounds weird when he says it. Sounds weird when you say it. So the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle anime series will premiere on September 29th on Nickelodeon. So, if you like what you're hearing, if you like what the theme song sounds sounding, check it out. Uh, I do want to bring up Michael Bay's uh, Ninja Turtles really quick, because two, epi two episodes uh. ago I mentioned that it's delayed, and it's being pushed back to May of 2014. And apparently the script has been leaked online, and one person read it. Uh, it's leaked online. More than one person has read it by this point, I think. Oh, not really, because this guy was actually exclusively reading it. This one person from Latino Review, El I can't even say his name because he's Spanish. Um, he tweeted about he was reading a script called The Blue Door, which was written by Andre Emick and Josh Applebaum. I don't even know who those guys are. The Blue Door was a co-name for the Ninja Turtles project. In the script were the names Krang, Bebop, Rock City, Technodrome, and Dimension X. Huh. And apparently it'd be a space opera. TMNT space opera. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Right. And the uh, synopsis of the film would be like, after their planet's destruction, four turtle-like alien warriors and their master come to Earth, where they join forces with reporter April O'Neil to prevent the extra-dimensional, extra I can't talk today, it's too late for me, extra-dimensional conqueror Krang from enslaving the human race. Huh. But this was before Paramount ordered a rewrite and put the project on hiatus. So, huh. so this was the script before that. So, so odds are none of this is going to happen. Probably not. That makes, me wonder, that makes me wonder, now that we know all of this information, provided it's true, because, you know, study some guy lying balls off, provided it's all true, I 
have to wonder. I, I'm, I'm still searching my mind for the answer myself. If would, would you deal with the revised order story for the turtles if it meant having Krang and Dimension X and all, all of that be a part of the movie? I. I. I just. Tough, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, that's a good question. I don't. I can't think of a good answer right now to say that. Yeah. Something, something to get the noodle going. Something to keep you think. Yeah. And uh, other than that, from Comic Con, there's only one more thing I had to mention, and it was the uh, Star Trek II incident with Carl Carl Urban. Yeah. He mentioned. Oh, poor baby. He, well, <laughs> obviously he. I I didn't read who most of it, but I didn't want to get spoilers, but he apparently leaked out the villain of the movie, which, like I said, I didn't read it, so if you yeah. wanted to find out... No, what happened was he, he got on a 22-hour um, plane trip from New Zealand, right in an interview, and he totally said who Benedict, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is playing. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, they've always been, like, hush about these movies and stuff, and he totally spilled his guts, because... I feel him. Like, you know, he's a huge fucking Star Trek nerd. Mm -hmm. It's just like, he's totally excited about this stuff. Yeah. He, he was totally just saying, like, not going to say it, not going to say it, not going to say it. I just said it. Fuck. Ooh. Um, hey, hey, JJ, uh, you're not going to, like, destroy my career, right? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, yeah. It's totally out, and they haven't denied it, like. Everyone thought, like, well, maybe it's one of those things where they, like, they leak something that's wrong. And, no, he's, he's since come out and been like, uh, guys, I, I came off a really long flight. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I think this is an episode. So now we know. <laughs> so now we know. Um, yeah. For those of us yeah. who are, like, spoilers, I eat spoilers for breakfast. Give me your spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I sometimes don't care about spoilers, but this one I just want to keep to myself. Um, yeah. But I was referring to another incident that happened at Comic Con because he oh, was Jesus. he was at Comic Con this year, and he said that he was bringing footage for them to see of, of you know a, like a teaser of Star Trek Two, and right. uh, they to he totally fooled everybody. He played a video of him surfing. <laughs> so. Yes. Woman, you read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just awesome. like, I was like, really? Wow, Carl, you're being edgy there. Wow. <laughs> Pissing people off. People are, I, I, I can imagine what they were like when they're sitting there watching it's like, what the hell is this? This ain't Star Trek 2. What <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, besides Star Trek 2, Carl Urban's going to be uh, playing the title character of Judge Dredd in the movie Dredd coming out uh, probably next month, I think. And I've seen uh, trailers and scenes from that movie so far and it is brutally gritty and violence to the max like wow mm. hmm. but uh, that's enough about Comic Con let's uh, talk about uh, something relating to Doctor Who besides the Comic Con thing and it's all about the 50th 50 fifth I can't talk today wow 50th, oh. <laughs> 50th anniversary of Doctor and Who Oh, 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 and, 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 Series 7 starts, what, what is it, August? I yeah, think it, th that's what I heard, too, that they, they're, they're given a date of next month, like on the f August 15th, I'm thinking, but I'm not sure August that... August 15th, really? I think so. I, I think that's what people are saying, but I don't think it's the... I think that's what it is. It's either that or in the fall sometime. Well, it's close to that. Yeah, so we'll, okay, uh... Let's see. What day does that fall? Oh, that falls. Okay. Wait. 
That's July. August. Oh, that's 15th. a Wednesday. Actually, that's a Wednesday. Yeah, that's, that's a Wednesday. Damn! I was I gonna say that'd be a great present for my roommate, who is also who is also a big Doctor Who fan. But no, yeah, no. but yeah, series seven is coming out this fall, so we don't know. It might be in August. Who knows? We'll find yeah. out. But uh, fifty years of Doctor Who, they've been doing this big anniversary thing, and they're and the big news right now is Tom Baker, the fourth Doctor will return yes. to Doctor Who for that anniversary yes. special. And I mean, it's not we're not we're they're not saying that they're he's gonna play the he might be playing the doctor, you know, we don't know what his role is gonna be. He's gonna be in the the special but not you know, we don't know what the role is. He could be playing the fourth doctor, which would probably be, be cool, but they probably have to explain how he's like four decades older and you know, but Steve Moffat has the oh, whole they, thing. You know, they explain that in, in uh, the one that actually did the tent and um, the uh, brain, oh my god, brain, where are you from right now? Uh, and the fifth doctor, yeah, they totally explain that. It's like, I forget how they explain it, but they totally just like, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, spacey wavy, racy, uh, wavy, yeah. away. Like, yeah, so. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, but yeah. So that's not the problem. Like, that is not the problem at all. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. But, yeah, Tom Baker's coming back. Yes, it's Tom Baker. I, I'm still jealous of Sophie. You got to meet him. Oh, uh, Sophie. Man. Damn. But, yeah, I uh, can't wait for that in November. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I personally am so excited about they've been filming the episode where they have Diane Rigg and Rachel Sterling in the episode together. Uh -huh. And it's like, okay, wait, what? <laughs> okay, okay, wait, let me, okay, Brad, then I'll explain. Um, so, oh, my God, how do I even begin to explain this to you? I, I, I have to, like, I, hang on, I need to get my fields in order. Okay, Diana Rigg was, is an actress who was in the 1960s by British show, The Avengers. She was, um, at a piece of she was amazing. And it was the spy show that a lot of American spy shows were based off in that period. So it was that, like, and don't even talk to me about the movie. The movie does not exist. Do not talk about the movie, <laughs> all right? No. What did... Doug reviewed that one week. Yeah, Doug reviewed that already, so it's already been covered. Yeah, so we don't have to talk about it. Right? No, we're, we're not. We're not talking about it. And so she was just like this, um, her character was amazing. She was like the scientist sex bomb thing who just like didn't take shit from anyone sort of thing. Amazing. Flawless. And her daughter is Rachel Sterling, who was in a miniseries called, I mean, it's very interesting, but she's most well known for being in a series called Tipping the Bell, which was a look at Victorian lesbian culture um, sort of thing. A little sensational, like, I enjoyed it on some levels, and other levels I was like, oh, you did that because lesbians and Victorian lesbians. But, on the whole, they're both flawless. I love them to bits. And they're both going to be in a Doctor Who episode, in the same episode, and everyone's all like, oh my god, like, what's, like, are they, like, Mother daughter in this, like what's the episode? Oh my God, mm -hmm. Emma Peel is gonna be in Doctor Who. Everyone, fangasm, fangasm. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. I actually I'll know when the episode airs. If it airs when I'm on the road, I will hear some. I'll be out in the countryside somewhere in the middle of Ohio. I will hear thousands upon millions of voices just going scream, <laughs> and I'll be like, damn it, I'm missing the, the show. The scream. That will happen is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, enough about Doctor Who. Let's. Uh, I got a couple more things before we end the podcast. Per se. Mm -hmm. um, another one I have is about Star Wars. Uh, Dark Horse Comics. If you're aware of them, you probably know. They're launching a new Star Wars comic that sets after Episode Four. And that's the one where they're, they're setting up uh, Leia to be like a, a, a pilot fighter and crap, and it looks awesome. It's, that's the one we're talking about, right? I think so. Because Leia kicks ass. Because she needs to kick more ass. Yeah, exactly. Because they're kicking ass ass. I mean... She need... Yeah. Kick ass, take names, 
Look good in the metal I'm really happy for you, and I'm going to let you finish, but your sister was the better of the twins all along. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. But yeah, they the comic book followed the characters of Luke, Leia, Han, and Chewie in the immediate aftermath of the original Star Wars film, Episode 4. Hmm. Huh. I that. I, I'm excited about that. I'd like to see what they do with that, because, I mean, yeah. you could easily put a pretty large gap between, you know, Episode IV and five, you know, or B, using the Roman numeral yeah. um, terminology here. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I can see what they do with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's all you need. Cause, yeah. uh, they, awesome. they will launch the new Star Wars comic beginning in January of 2013. Hmm. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, another reason why the world is not going to end, everybody still needs to get to their six, and George Lucas needs more money. <laughs> He's not going to have a world end, folks. Uh. All right. Uh, last last story before we before it leads into the top seven, the end of the podcast, is that uh, have you guys seen Drive, the movie that came out recently, a year ago? I think this is the first I've heard of it. Really, you have not heard of the Ryan Gosling Ryan Gosling movie of Drive, where he plays a character named Driver, and he's a stunt driver, and shit happens with a robbery, uh, and uh, you know, some. Not ring a bell. I work as a driver. I'm not watching movies about drivers. I, yeah, I remember <laughs> that was a thing, and I've I've failed at getting on the Ryan Gosling boat. Uh, somehow I missed that, and sorry, world, <laughs> I'm a little, I, damn, damn, I can't believe it, um, the director of that movie, uh, oh, shit, um, Nicholas Winding R- Riff, Nicholas Winding Riff, I think his name, he's going to direct a TV series, that's going to be based off the 1968 movie Barbarella. Hmm. Oh, Lord above almighty. Really? Oh. Oh. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know how that's going to work. Can I, end a, can I end on a happy note? Huh. Can I, so they've declared that the Captain America 2 movie is going to be the Winter Soldier um, um, storyline, and I my body is ready. Bring it. Let's do this, Bucky. Let's go. Yes. Let's. <laughs> Let's, I mean, balls to the wall, ridiculous. I was frozen and the Soviets grabbed me and my arm was torn off and they gave me a bionic arm and I don't have memories of my time with the captain and I'm an assassin and I had a thing with, with um, you know, uh, Black Widow and, oh my God, yes, ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. So. All right. I'm excited. I'm excited about Captain America 2 now. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's, yeah. Let's get some fun, dude. Yeah. There you go. So, we end the podcast with this top number list where we go through a list and react to it. So, since we heard the news about, you know, a Barbarella series coming in the near future, uh, we should talk about seven movies that should be TV shows. Before Barbarella. Uh, should be TV shows. Yeah, should be TV shows based off movies. I mean, there's uh, been some, movies. there's been some bad ones out there, but you know, let's let's uh, talk about some uh, movies that should be TV shows before Barbarella. Uh, let's see. The okay. first first one would be uh, the Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension. Huh. You have. Not heard of that movie, haven't you? Oh, I have heard about that movie because I'm like obsessed with that movie, and somehow I have been able to. But, like he is obsessed to the point where it's like I would watch it if he wasn't so obsessed. Where it's almost like I almost feel like he has to trap me in his room and like tie me down and no, really, we're watching this now um, before I will actually watch. It. Um, not like that's an invitation, 
for him to do so. <laughs> but oh my! <laughs> it, it's, it's, he's a little intense about it, and it, that worries me. <laughs> yeah. I've heard the name, but not the movie yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it's it was a pretty good sci-fi movie of the of the eighties, and at the closing credits, they kind of uh do like a sequel kind of thing you know oh buckaroo bunzai would return in the buckaroo bunzai against the world crime league and you know that movie never came out the sequel never been made so they're like okay let's make a tv series let's should do this there was an attempt in the 90s but it never came together yeah so now it should, I, I should be a good time to make that. it yeah but yeah. the thing is is that the characters now are older, you know. It's not going to work because unless I mean, you, could reboot. you you could do a reboot, but yeah. you know, what if it could be like a prequel? You know, see his adventures before any his early adventures. You know, with new cast, you know, and maybe you can have a shoehorn the older a- actors as cameo appearances or something like that. Hmm. Uh, uh, gotta be careful not to go too much of the small route too, you know. Yeah, true. Uh, let's see. The second one is a boy and his and his dog. A boy and his dog. Yeah, have you heard about this film? No, but didn't they already do a TV series like that and called it Lassie? It's a little bit different, uh, Gomer. Uh, a Isn't boy. That like a like end of the world. Thing. Yeah, it's a it's a post apocalypse kind of movie. Uh, it's a seventy four film starring a young Don Johnson before Miami Vice. And uh it's set in an alternate history where two more world worlds have left the earth in a scorched wasteland and a young man named uh Vic scrapes out a uh merger existence among the ruins with the help of a telepathic mutt named Blood. Huh. Yeah, and Vic helps protect Blood, and Blood uses his, his enhanced senses to help Vic forge. And, you know, it would be a good series. I mean, there's a lot of good apocalyptic kind of shows, like The Walking Dead is being good right now, you know, the zombie apocalypse, you know. And, yeah. I mean, all dramas, you know, are being born of the apocalypse premise, so I th- clearly think it'd be a good series. Maybe someone make it. Uh, I think I would, I think I'd be more interested in seeing like like Life Man as a series. But that's just me. I like that comic. It's good. Yeah. Um, the third movie that should be uh, made into a TV series would be The Rocketeer. That. Yes. Yeah. That. Yes. Yes, let's do it. Seriously, come on. Why hasn't anybody (laughs) done it? I mean, it'd be a great TV series. I swear to God. Wait, who who owns that franchise? Isn't it Disney? Uh, I believe so. I think it is. Let me double check really quick here. Let's see. Because if it is, I'm going to have to say, Disney, sell it to somebody else. Let them do it. You guys make good movies, but sometimes your TV shows, at least, you know, uh, no. Some of them are good. You know, Disney Afternoon was some of the best cartoons I ever watched growing up. But, yeah. No. Oh, God. Rocketeer. If I can spell. Um, I don't watch Darkwing Duck. <laughs> Darkwing Duck. Bum, 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 bum. Um... Shiitake mushrooms. Um, yes, Walt Disney and Touchstone Pictures. Uh, okay, okay, Walt Disney and Touchstone. Okay, just okay. Disney hands off. Let Touchstone do all the work. Yes, that's all I gotta say. All right, yeah. Uh, the fourth movie that should be turned into a TV series: uh, Galaxy Quest. That hi. And the way it was set up, you could easily do that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean... Different adventures through space, and and even then, you could even say it's like a TV show with a TV show and a TV show. 
Yeah. yeah. Perception, maybe? Probably. I mean, it's, I mean, you could get the original cast back, but, you know, they're probably going to be busy. Unless, uh, I don't know. What's Tim Allen doing? I don't know. Oh, maybe Tim Allen's schedule is probably free, but I don't know. Sigourney Weaver. Alan um, Rickman. Tony Stolb, I think, was in it. Yep. Sam, Sam Rockwell. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's it's the ultimate, you know, you know, you don't have sci-fi. So, I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought it was an okay movie. Uh, yeah. Idiocracy. Really? Idiocracy is a TV series? Um, I've never seen it, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, Idiocracy... <clears throat> is a movie where Luke Wilson uh, gets, you know, propelled into the future, and the future is, you know, a bunch of idiots! You know, people are so dumb, and he's the only smart guy in the future. We are a planet of idiots. Wait, wrong movie. I think I'm mom and saved the world. <laughs> oh, man. Um... Yeah, let's just move on, because nobody cares about idiocracy. Uh, Daybreakers. Daybreakers is the uh, film of which vampires are looking for a cure to become humans. I have never seen Daybreakers, so I have no idea. But it's a vampire oh. series, I will say that. Uh, <laughs> okay, last one. Uh, Serenity. Have you seen this movie? What amazing cast. What amazing setting. This thing will make a truly kick-ass TV series, am I right? Uh, why has anybody not thought of this before? Wait a minute. Oh, oh. Didn't they do that already? They need to do it again? Why, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, you... <laughs> That's that's how the that, that's how oh, the list is oh, written. You, yeah. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, I will admit I have not seen much of Firefly, but what I have seen, I enjoyed a lot of. Yeah, I mean, uh, out of these movies, which one would you want to see become a a TV show the most? Hmm. A movie that I would want to become a TV show. It's enough, I wouldn't mind seeing a James Bond television series. See how they can handle it with, like, a 30-minute to a one-hour time frame. Are they... Because there's always so much more that Bond can do. So, it, it, it would be an interesting thing to see. Hell, even serialize it if you must. Didn't, didn't they already do that already? But the, it was James Bond Jr.? Yeah, but that's James Bond Jr. Oh, I'm talking James Bond himself. Not not some not some little thirty minute kids show. <laughs> I was trying to reel myself into that, but uh, actually it would be pretty interesting because uh, James Bond is you know the iconic British spy, and you know the Brits have two major things going for them: Doctor Who and James Bond. Oh yeah. And well, they do. You have some good-looking women over there, too. Oh, mm. well, totally. Yeah. Hi, Hagen. Hail, Hagen. Because <laughs> technically Northern Ireland is part of Great Britain. Yeah, so. it sure is. So it is. <laughs> and this, that, that was the top seven, you know, movies that should be made in TV shows. Mm -hmm. Ah, and then we got to close the podcast, so... <laughs> Wow, it's been a thrill well, ride tonight. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm getting very tired because I don't do podcasts at night normally. Well, yeah. <laughs> then I can do it. Yeah. What can I do? Hey, what can you do, right? What can, oh, what can people do? Um, this is Mike, and along with me was Gomer. Have a good night, folks. I'm going to go have a cigar and a brandy and sit back and enjoy my porn. Sure you are.
Sure. <laughs> like, like, we tell you. Special, special, special like thing. Special, special thanks to the guest known as Nella for coming on. Cheers. <laughs> uh, and uh, you've been attacked by the awesome.